There we are. We are now live on Facebook. Right. So I guess give it a few minutes for people to trickle in. Not too many. I should turn this on to gallery so I can see who's here. Oh, there we are. Hello, hello everyone. How wonderful. Wow, this is amazing to see you all. This is great. And some of you are up very early and some of you are a little bit late for bed. <laughs> yeah. So it is after one. So maybe I will just take a sip of tea and start. If everyone could uh, turn off their mics, that would be a good thing. <clears throat> No, clearly you're still there, so. I am, I, I have the ability to mute all, but then everybody will have to be responsible for unmuting themselves when it is their turn to mm -hmm. participate. Would you like me to do that? Yes, please. Okay, I'm muting everybody and that includes you, Mail. Don't forget. I don't forget. Yep. All right. Well, welcome. This is, this is amazing that we've gotten here and there are so many people who have been able to come. I'm very happy to welcome you all. Those who are going to read, those who are going to sing, and uh, those who have just come to offer their presence to Bridget and to the rest of us. We're just a tiny portion of the huge apparently, community of, of uh, people who, who love Bridget. Um, hi from Geraldine Workins. hello. <laughs> yes, it's, which I was gonna say, just starting in Ireland and working, working her way outward. There are people in many places in the world now who um, love and rely on Bridget, and we're getting to build a community with each other, which is really lovely, really lovely. Um, so actually, Geraldine in um, Dublin, is that where you are? Um, it was she who gave me the idea to, to do this as a community launch rather than um, just about me and my book, because I would be here without Bridget, but the book certainly wouldn't be. I mean, it, everything about it is um, about loving her and wanting to learn more about her and exploring that relationship between us and, and all of that. And um, knowing you people, many of you, most of you, I only have known through the internet, um, but I've learned so much more about um, about Bridget, but also about how to be with Bridget and how to um, how, how to see her, but also how to tame my own certainties <laughs> and sometimes completely transform them and and then to have to try and tame the new certainties because it's so easy to feel like I know what's right. And um, that's not really how the world works. And it sure isn't how Bridget works because she's uh, so many faceted. She's been um, important to people for hundreds of years, at least, at least a thousand, probably many more than that. So, so that's meant that how we perceive her 
depending on our circumstances, where we are um, is going to be different throughout time. And even now, there are probably as many visions of Bridget as there are people who, who look to her. So um, so I, I do want to not completely forget to hold up my book. Can you see it? Yes. So I do have a book now. It's published. It's available as an ebook or a paper book, big heavy book. Um, and I'm just so happy to, to just let her out into the world. And I do want to thank Clayley, who's hosting. She, she is, I mean, this job of hosting is a much bigger job than I realized. And she thought of a lot of things that I hadn't thought about. Um, so thank you so much for offering that service uh, uh, to us, Clayley, it's great. And Clayley also um, did the, she edited the arc of the poems in the book. So she went through all the poems and decided which ones to toss and which ones to put in. And, and then we sort of worked together, but she figured out an order for first, that we would have three sections and then what would be in each of those sections. So that was a big job too. And I'm really grateful. Um, Clearly is very talented. So what else do I need to say? I think I've already said everything that I'm really grateful to everybody, the people who critique the poems and, and have helped me through everything. And now I will just end that little introduction. Um, and Clay did, clearly did mention in the chat that many, probably most of the poems uh, that you'll hear tonight, and even at least one of the songs uh, are also on my Bridget uh, poetry blog, Stone on the Belly. So if you want to see them again, they're there. And Clayley's put the URL in the chat. So, just want us to take a moment to get a little more grounded than we might be. Just to tune into our bodies, our breath and notice that we don't have to be anywhere else right now. We don't have to be doing anything else. And we can just really be here. So let's just take a few sort of calming breaths. Let the breath go to any part of your body that may be a little bit tight, a little bit tense. And just bathe it with that air. And as you exhale, just let all of that stress wash out through your muscles, your bones, in and out. In and out. So I'm going to read a couple of poems 
And then we'll just move on to the next person. So if you're reading or singing, um, if you need to have a reminder when you're coming up next, maybe uh, Clayley could send you that reminder in the chat. Song of Bridget. I am a kirk riding deadly swells, strong, sure as a whale's back. Rest with me. I am a brook smoothly winding, splitting earth and rock. Drink of me. I am the sound of standing stones, the spear that halts destruction. Endure with me, brandish me. Who holds the flame within the pool? Who invokes the poet's spark? Who heals and fells with words, forges sword and cauldron both? I am the fullness of life. Born of light, I wed the darkness. I am three, I am one a wind-stripped cairn above the lake. Know my mystery, stand with me. Fisherman's Shield. Sleep yet dully gnawing, he wakens, burrows up through dark, whispering to herself, she too draws up from black to black. She lights a candle, he slides into his sweater, knit in calligraphic paths, blessed by dew on Bridget's Eve as the saint passed by. Straightens it round himself, cold wool on warm underclothes. Their home's best prayer entwines him now. Into the darkness steps. She hears his feet on stones along the path. He crunches down to wait to join the waiting sea. Who tends her flame? This one is old, so she tells us. Seldom ventures from her house, sees ice form on boughs above the passing stream, marks the flight of owls, prays urgently for soldiers, for children, for the soul of a country, she says, that damns itself, comes to her shift early, leaves late. This one dances in red grinding lights, song flung across a throbbing stage, guides her pen over gaping pages, creamy coffee cold in her forgotten cup, raises her eyes to age dimpled windows, tattoos the knots of Bridget on her back. This one toils in church offices, wrestles her child through pain, addiction, duck, <laughs> dreams of mossy shrines and rain silt hills. She carries her mother through stroke and cancer, trades stinging words, retreats into her yogic lair to pray, jests when life tastes bitter on her tongue. Who tends her flame? Women, children, men, who await the unexpected, who wish for more, for self, for soul, for world, who linger a moment longer than they must, who when rays of sunlight strike slanting through shadow, see a bright eye watching and fiery dancing feet. And the last one. My life as a bird. When at end of life, my spirit is freed and takes wing. 
I will fly to you. A small wren, a dunnock perhaps, dun brown and barely seen in life, dun brown and barely seen in death. Joyful, fruitful, feeding in the shelter of your great tree, polishing my bill against its bark. Your work shall be my enlightenment. I will rest upon your palm, gaze in simple trust into your labyrinthine eyes. Hi, Mail. That was absolutely beautiful. I was totally lost there listening to you. <laughs> I completely forgot I meant to be next. It was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I have to say I love the book and thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this. And I really enjoyed listening to you read there. That was lovely. Um, I'll crack on because I know we've a lot of performers. <laughs> um, the poem I'm going to read for you is a poem of mine called God Seen Through Splinters. And it's an attempt, it's my devotional poem, it's a poem that I actually return to a lot in my own practice. And it's an attempt to express both the nature of the gods, but also to express how little we can know them and how difficult it is for us to express them. So it is gods seen through splinters. Engesog is a wisp of red silk on a tablecloth of crocheted lace with sparkling champagne in elegant flutes. Morrigan is a stain of rowan berries crushed blood red into the virgin snow by the outspread wing of a fallen crow. Anya is the burnished glow of a golden vessel on a marble hearth reflecting the embered glow of the fire. Cleona is the taste of salt on a breeze that whips up from the west on a twilight on a summer's eve. Crom Dove is the rocky outcrop on a hill above Loch Dan where frockenberries grow late under a pale blue sky. Dagda is the waterfall, the silent noise of power the inexorable progress of gravity. Dana is the soft springy moss between children's toes on a turf grown plain, bog cotton gaily growing amid rough grasses. And Mananon is the slice of reeds and sand dunes, unexpected sharpness against the bleached white of shells and bones and smooth round stones. And that's me. <laughs> Thanks again, May. Really enjoying this lovely event. Um. Hello, I'm Hilaire in Wales. It's really lovely to be here. And uh, I received my copy of the book this morning. It's wonderful. Um, so I'll read my poem. History of Bridget. You walked out of ancient mists, bringing light to my path, blessing with fire restoring the life with the flame. Clothed in your grace, I follow your footsteps to the place where mysteries merge and the shapes behind myth are revealed as truth. Your presence soothes and sharpens memory. You are my maker of song, the radiant flame of gold that illuminates the land beyond the ninth wave, that forges a sword of light to penetrate, to heal. Kneeling at your well, I drink of your mystery. The waters of the sun flood my skull with sacred fire, flowing with light, 
my spirit sings of the deep. Hi, I'm Erin Laurie. I am uh, living in Trieste, Italy, and it's uh, a little after 10.30 here in the evening. Um, thank you, uh, Maya, for inviting me to, to read here this evening. We've been friends for a very long time, and it's always a pleasure to see you. I have two short poems that I would like to read for you all this evening. Uh, the first is called Bridget Dreams the Poet. I want a poet with words of honey and bitter dregs of red Hungarian wine, dressed in the bones of birds, with wild ecstatic eyes and feet that dance the bonfire's rim. I want a poet with many souls, souls of mice and tigers, souls of ravenous hungry ghosts and the singing souls of rivers, of wallowing bellowing buffalo, souls of moths and geckos. I want a poet with eyes of crystal shards that see through flesh and spy the hearts of trees and mountains bones with thin strong fingers to pluck the hawthorn's bloom and Belton's dawning dews. I want a poet with ballads for breath and chants to scatter fear from the deeps of night or call the wren from her nest with spells to lay children to sleep and bind the rising moon. I want a poet with fur and claws, hot, panting tongue, thirsty and seeking the spring. The second poem is about a much less known aspect uh, or personality of the goddess is Brig Amboy, the, the Bridget of the Cowless Warriors. Basically, this is the, the Bridget who stands up for the oppressed. If you believe I am the comforting mother, you are wrong. If you believe only in the creation of my forge, you are wrong. If you believe my songs are only to praise, you are wrong. I am Kaicha singing curses on my enemies. I am the destroying flame. I am the wolf who lays low the tyrant. I am wrath and fury blazing. I am the brown swan rising from the lake. I am the torch in the hand of every Dipak. I am the poison of satire and pain. I am the anger that calls to justice. I am the foot that treads upon evil. I am the fear in the hearts of oppressors. I am the shield against every attack. I am the courage that streams in your veins. I am the death of every illusion. My children shatter every binding chain. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Gemma in County Meath in Ireland. Erin, that was amazing. And thank you to everyone who's shared so far. It's just absolutely fantastic it's such a blessing to be here thank you so much Casey for bringing us all together and for your astonishing words that never fail to take us all on such a journey um this song I wrote during the first lockdown um originally on the harp and then Casey had a dream, woke up about four o'clock in the morning, I think back in January and contacted me and said, Gem, I think you need to give me a song for my blog. And I went, oh, I think I have a song. And then I went to record the song and then I realized I needed to completely redo it for the piano, which I hadn't played for 25 years. So there may be mistakes, <laughs> but thank you, Casey, because you brought you brought the piano very much back into my life and thank you, Breach. Looking at 
I'm going to share a video of the first of two poems by Heather Upfield.
My apologies. I have it cued. I just have to do it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I found her. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. I'm talking to you from Southwest Scotland, and it's such an honour to have been invited by Mail Brigda to read some of my poetry at this wonderful event. Thank you. I'm starting with um, the intercession for a friend, uh, an invocation to breed. In a time of ailing, Breed is there, the lightest touch upon the wrist, easing the stress with delicate care in silver, pearl and amethyst. When black rain falls from a leaden sky and darkness penetrates the soul, the light of breed glows ever nigh, a glimmering golden aureole. Sweet breed of the fragrance of the flowers, my loved one needs your warm embrace. Send perfumed petals in aromatic showers for everything they have to face. Hello everyone. Um, I'm sorry I had to move because there was a uh, very noisy three-year-old in the room and uh, you might even be able to hear her down here. But anyway, <laughs> I will uh, now read my poem. Elemental Breeze, I have heard your voice and it is a deep knowing vibration. You are the keening on the wind, the sorrow of loss. You are the breath that breathes new light, new thoughts, new knowledge. You are the beating of the wings of a swan, the poet's cloak of feathers. You are the falling acorns of your sacred oak. Elemental Brige, I have felt your touch and it is deep within the beating of my heart. You are the green grass and the hollow hills, the crags, the trilithons, and the burial mound. You are the speckled snake, prophetess of time. You are the three worlds united in the wide branches, touching towering trunk and underground roots of your sacred ash. Elemental Brige, I have tasted both bitterness and intoxication in the flowing waters and gentle brook and the rushing river. For you are the five streams of my senses, the surge of the ocean, the deep, clear pool. You hold wisdom and healing, the blood of life. You are the delicate bend of the willow. Elemental Brige, I have seen your true nature and I know who you are. You wear the multi-hued raiment of a changing flame. You are the bright, strong desire of fire in the belly, the burning creation of fire in the head, the heat of the sun and the inner soul. You are the words of the poet and the bard. You are the lightning strike on the living oak of the Druids.
Thank you. Wow, this is so amazing. You all are just beautiful. Um, so Mel asked me to read my poem, Bridget of the Morning, which I wrote in um, 1998 when I was doing a series of, of uh, poems asking my deities, inviting them to speak in the first person. I am the poet and the poem, the inspiration in the night. I stand beside the tarb feast and whisper wisdom low and true. I am the shining sun of morning, a fire that burns inside the head. My gifts are knowledge and transformation. I pound and quench and draw out souls upon the forge of time. The flowing waters of my well soothe womb and soul alike. At childbed, I am the midwife who brings new souls to birth, for mine is the gift of life. Those who seek me will find nourishment. I am the brewer of new ale. I am the baker of the grain. All acts of transformation will I aid. The seed becomes the shoot. The shoot grows as its nature dictates. Thus, it has always been and always shall be. I am the vitality of fire that dwells within. Appreciate it, Marcin. Rowan, that was beautiful. Thank you. I felt the energy and the heat in that. I felt so much energy from everyone who has shared so far. This is such a treat to be here and to take this in like a buffet of Bridget gifts and art. Um, Mel Brigda, congratulations on your wonderful book. I'm so excited for you and I'm very happy to be a part of this. Thank you so much for inviting me. I am uh, going to share. My name is Erin Aurelia, and Mel asked me to share a poem of mine. Uh, it's called What She Speaks When I Tend Her Flame. <clears throat> I transform, she says, the raw meat into food, the raw thoughts into poetry, the raw materials into arts and crafts, the raw ore into weapons and tools, the raw plants into healing drafts. In your heart, distress to peace. In your mind, worry to reassurance. And in your body, death into life and then life into growth. In your life, suffering into power. I transform by the grace of the flame. She said, you too can embody transformation. From chaos to order, from complacency to vigilance, from disease to healing, from loneliness to togetherness, from other worlds to this world, from outside to in, from self to others, like a gift. Gifting is gracing. Gift yourself, gift another and then another. Receive in grace and give in grace. Become grace and then we become the flame her flame in this world. So shine on for her, for you, for all. Thank you. Shine on indeed. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, yes, it is wonderful to be here today. My name is Amy Panetta. Sometimes I translate my name into Irish on Facebook. Um, so I'm Amy Niaranin, but so I'm American. I uh, come from New Jersey, um, but I'm located actually in Canada, in Quebec, Canada, outside of Montreal, in a town named after Bridget, believe it or not, called St. Bridget de Iberville, uh, set up in the 1840s by uh, some Irish immigrants who wanted to name the town after um, their patron saint in Ireland. So um, so um, I would like to share with you maybe one of the more well-known um, Bridget songs called Agawa Multibrija. And if you know it, feel free to sing along. Um, of course, mute it at your own place. Um, 
but this song, um, the the words, I, I still am trying to figure out who wrote them, but the actual melody um, is a quite old melody um, called um, Ave Mari Stella. And it was, um, it was written for Mary, but of course we know um, Bridget is the Mary of the Irish. Um, so uh, this is my humble offering today. I'm playing on a, a mountain dulcimer, which it might have some roots in, um, in Europe, but actually it's an American instrument in Appalachian mountains, often in West Virginia or Kentucky. So I think that says a lot about where uh, Bridget has touched uh, the lives of so many um, through immigration and uh, diasporas uh, in so many parts of the world. So um, I always just felt like it fit to play on this mountain dulcimer um, to accompany Goa Malta Regia. And of course, full disclosure, I'm, I'm American. I do have Irish ancestry, but uh, I'm not a native Irish speaker. Spent some time in Ireland, but um, I just wanted to let you know this. I've been told that I sing with more of a Northern accent based on how I learned this song. So, okay, please enjoy. And you may sing along, of course, too. Thank you. Congratulations, Mayo. Thank you, Amy. Um, our friend Nia was going to read the next one, but she hasn't been able to make it, so I'm going to read it for her. Um, she's in my Buddhist Sangha and we were just, a few of us got together one day and we were reading our poems to each other. So I read to her, uh, The Bird of Three Realms and she wrote this in response. I won't try to read the Vietnamese version. Seating here while listening, an insightful swan poem links three realms, sky, earth to sea, transmitted Irish traditions, white spreading wings, embrace whole cosmos, prolonged sufferance, persistent human errors, prejudice, miscommunication, elegant long neck touching blue sky, healing with loving kindness, oh beautiful swan bridging east, west, sharing similar philosophies, harmony spreading, 
gorgeous white swan, highlighted old paintings, dark earth, clear ocean. The poet writes the prophecy of future, old Irish beliefs, thousand year cultural transmission. Next up is a poem by Daniela Semina, who is unable to be here. I will mute everyone and then screen share. Hello, everyone. Hello. Malbrigda and distinguished companions. Um, I feel honored and a little bit nervous being here with all of you today, albeit virtually, for this very, very important event, the launching of Sun Among Stars book of um, written by everyone's beloved Mel Brigda. I have a poem to share. It is my, my gift for the group, for this event. This is the first poem that I have ever written. It was written at a time when I truly had no idea that I can actually write poetry. And it is the story of my connecting, not really encountering, but really connecting with of uh, Bridget at her home, so to speak, in Kildara, Ireland. The power in her hearth. I kept my eyes tightly shut for as long as I could. I was so afraid to open them wide. I was afraid that too much beauty would flood in and crack my heart, breaking it into pieces. Because you see, never in my life before had I known such beauty existed. That wasn't the ordinary kind of beauty, the sort of beauty that would use my eyes as a most convenient door to make its way in. That beauty was radiance of fire reflected by water, sparkling brighter than any diamond would ever spark. And it made me wonder, how do I know it? How do I dare to describe it without even looking at it? Because you see, I kept my eyes tightly shut for as long as I could, fear ridden. Twin hearts make great bridges. The vastness of waters vanished and so did the lapse in time. A lock of hair blown away by the wind in Kildera. The same wind that made the oaks around her heart sing and her flame dance, my heart thus found its place into the land where once her heart stood. Yes, it was my heart for which the hairlock had been a placeholder only as she, the file and the band of Tur, instructed Anamkara to do. Without me knowing, nor wanting, nor daring to want, shall I say, in the middle of the night the light erupted and beauty of the most special kind made itself visible to my soul, where I, it could be seen and felt in its unadulterated splendor, although my eyes were still tightly shut, because I'm stubborn, you see. She went ahead and forged my whole being into the best of forms, whatever best meant for me at the time. And my form then swished like the fiery swift arrow just launched from her bow. Arrow was I, crafted and branded by her, marked with her mark, so I will not forget. So I will not ever dare to shut my eyes again. So I shall never escape or let it escape. Beauty and power, the filler and the bond of tour in my own life ever again.
We can't hear you, Kat. Any ideas, Clary? No, I know Kat had issues when she first came on. It does sound like the mic. Kat, if you would like to exit and come in again, um, we can slot you in somewhere else, or would you like to keep on trying? And if all else fails, I can read your poem too. Let us move on to Lisa. Kat, if you want to um, take the time to see what you can figure out. Ah, uh, we do not have Lisa Wagoner mail. Do you have her poem? Here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you on my list. Oh, I will, oh. number 14? Yes, yes, I understand that. I'm looking for Lisa W in the participants list. Are you using another name? Uh, no, I'm listed as Lisa W. Oh. See me? I'm waving. Hang on. Um, Kat, uh, do you want to mute yourself? Thanks. Lisa W, could you wave again? Oh. <laughs> Why couldn't I see you? I'm so embarrassed. I do apologize. No, no worries at all. No worries at all. Can everybody see me now? Oh, 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 yeah. Can, so, go, okay to go ahead? Yes, please. Sorry. All right. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, everyone. Oops, wait one second. Um, I'm Lisa Wagner, and I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, and um, I'm just truly honored to be among all of you today, and congratulations to Mel on this book. I'm so excited for it. Um, the poem that I'm reading today is called uh, Bridget in the Year of 2020, and I wrote it in January, looking back at the previous year with COVID and everything, and Mail didn't know this, but she published it on my birthday in March, which was quite a gift. And um, here we are in August, and I feel like this applies to this year as well in a lot of ways. So I hope you enjoy this. Bridget in the year of 2020. Oh, Bridget, I stand in front of your altar daily, sometimes not so present, all sleepy eyed and foggy headed, wondering what to do next, if anything. This year was an endless parade of what now? Yet I always spent time with you, asking for guidance, hoping you would light the way, if anything. I kept the offerings plentiful weekly, brought items of nature, praying that now you would grant me some answers, if anything. And so now the end of the year is nigh. And you were there so subtle that I didn't always notice. Guiding, teaching, answering. With much gratitude, I am much more faithful, if anything. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jen McHale. I am in upstate New York. I am very grateful and honored to be a part of this today. And congratulations, uh, Mail, on your book. I can't wait to read it. Um, my poem is called Prayer to Bridget, the Peace Bride. Oh, peace bride, beloved of breasts, you gave your hand to heal warring kin. For what is home without peace? Mourning mother, 
inventor of keening, you who count the cost when families fight. Guide me through my trials with the diplomat's grace. Peace weaver, let me be the balm of warring hearts. Let our passions be the hearth of sanctuary, not the blaze of hate. Let me strive always to speak with peace and steady the hand before it reaches for the blade. Let me be vulnerable to our shared disappointments, our shames and our histories, and from them always weave peace from the broken threads of the world. Um, Kat, are you able to read now or shall I read your poem? Still no sound. <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you wanna mute yourself? So this is, this is Kat's poem. Breed. I light your flame for peace. I light your flame. I light your flame for healing. I light your flame. Breed of three faces. I light your flame. Breed of the forge. I light your flame. I light your flame for strength. I light your flame. I light your flame for knowledge. I light your flame. Breed of the flame of nine tongues. I light your flame. Breed, goddess of poets. I light your flame. I light your flame for growth. I light your flame. I light your flame in memory. I light your flame. Breed, goddess of midwives. I light your flame. Breed, guardian of the passage into life, I light your flame. I light your flame for calmness, I light your flame. I light your flame for patience, I light your flame. Breed, guide of lambs, I light your flame. Breed, goddess of sunrise, I light your flame. I light your flame. I have a second poem by Heather Upfield, who I will screen share for everybody now. And now from my cycle of poems, which honour breed in the, the Wheel of the Year, entitled uh, Songs of the Oyster Catcher. This is Summer Solstice. In all the wonder of brilliant light, of blazing, blinding, transfiguring flame, of the power and the passion of the solar circle, breed a rose by any other name. Breed the queen of fire and light who hangs her mantle on the sun. Breed of courage, fortitude and strength. Breed of life ere life begun. Breed of solstice, in exalted glory you come with light for the good of all. But your throne is a daisy, surrounded by bees, for you burn with love for all things small. Thank you. Thank you. 
so that is all of us for reading today. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. I, I just wanted to mention that um, <clears throat> that uh, Heather's cycle, the songs of the oyster catcher, you can download the PDF through through the blog Stone on the Belly. And if if any of you have rigid poems of any sort or songs that you'd like to see on the blog, I'm open to hearing about it. Um, did anyone just happen to come with a poem or a song that they wanted to share? If so, raise your hand, say something in chat, or just unmute yourself. Well, I actually I did too. <laughs> oh. You did, Diane? I did. I actually didn't realize this was going to be a performance event, but it's been just delightful and, and wonderful to be here. Um, I am a singer songwriter, recording artist. I don't perform live anymore for medical reasons, but um, I do have a recording of my Briad song. So I posted the link in the chat. Um, if uh, anyone wants to hear it now, I could share my screen and do it that way. Otherwise, feel free to just check the link. I, I can't hear you now. <laughs> I, I just got muted. <laughs> Go ahead and share it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll share my screen. This is a song I wrote about two years ago. Um, going through my some of my worst medical issues. Breed was with me in the ER and I thanked her with this song. This is just an acapella recording. Ultimately, my duo will probably record this. It's called Breed of Light. Breed of light, lady of flame, lady in white and mantle green, lady of heart, he Help us to face the unseen. Open our hearts, let our dawn appear. Healing solar power at the sunrise. Open our eyes, help us to give meaning in our words, beauty in our soul. Then may we all know the body in its time is a vessel to bring spirit near and spring will come again. And the world will wear your mental
<laughs> Dang. <laughs> and Heidi, I think you said you wanted to read something. I would love to. I'm so excited for your book coming out. It's um, it's a beautiful offering, and um, yeah, this is a gift, a real gift. This poem that I would love to read is called "The I Am of Brigid," and I wrote it a couple of years ago, um, as part of some land working and some national healing. Um, but it's an invocation for all time, really. I am the fair maid and the gentle melt of snow. I am the spring bride and the black rod cessation. I am the swan queen and the swift river flow. I am the new green shoot and the cow's sweet libation. I am the shining one and midwife of soul. I am the liminal shore, oyster catcher's son. I am the pilgrim's lantern and way shown. I am the heart's yearning and night's wave invitation. I am the flame, the blaze and the ember glow. I am the white wand and the fired imagination. I am the cunning that the serpent tongues know. I am the bard's muse and the wind's incantation. I am the forge and the mighty hammer blow. I'm the healing balm and fiery purification. I am the warming light that seeks out each shadow. I am the truthful quill and its communication. I am the cosmic crown and the greening below. I am the call of the land beneath a nation. I am the hearth fire, welcome to all as friend, not foe. I am the kith and kin, the return and salvation. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. So, could, could I share a poem, please? Sure, Where, who, who was speaking? It's Sarah. Okay, go for it. Thank you very much, thank you. <clears throat> Liquid green gleam the eyes of the wild cat crouched in the furze break as the green glowing sky over them lie a film of moons. They bind us with innumerable geyser. I am the one dressed in bearskins, walking in the power of the three. This land of mouldering cities is a dream of emptiness. Brigantia, there is only Brigantia, the daughter of the bear. I am a poet in her power. White daughter of the east, bright in the dawning, mound queen, young moon. Pollen falls from the sun rising. I forge cunning treasure in her power. Red mother of the south, fire honey and the perfumed thunderbolt, honey of kingship outspread over the land. Royal honey, richly pouring, with her sleep the high kings and they are one. I breathe healing words in her power for the tribes of the goddess. Stone heads stare, stone eyes around her well at twilight. Swan feathers through dim air are the cloaks of maidens who bear the silver cup. Leaping silver salmon of the purple spots. Fairy chains glitter between worlds at twilight, chains of pale silver. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. So I guess that's us done, unless somebody has said something in the chat that I 
don't know about. Were there any questions anyone had or? Oh, one more poem? Sure. Just chosen at random. At random. Bridget and the Madman. The Madman came, bearded and wild, toenails curved inward, hair tangled with feathers. Birds dug dark beetles from his skin. Seven years he'd wandered, eyes bloodied with grief for slaughter. Black pinioned spirits of battle hung above clash and clamor, dizzied the warring chieftain urged him to flee to woods and plain, live on cresses, take counsel from birds. Bridget heard his gibbering, gibbering, went to him with ale and butter, begged to hear the wisdom of his unsettled mind. What did he see in her of cress or woodcock or fawn that permitted him to stop a while and preach his anguished truth. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> That's right. It, it's been amazing listening to everyone tonight. And I'm really grateful to all of you for coming. So thank you. and. We'll see you on the flip side. I think we've all had a beautiful time. I just wanted to ask you, if you don't mind, when you're reading your poems in your daily kind of devotion and, and uh, worship or, or interaction with Bridget, do you read a lot of your poems aloud? Do you, do you read to her? Or is it more like receiving imbus and inspiration and writing down? Uh, it it varies. Like often, uh, I will have been saying the different prayers, and so I read it aloud too. So it's it's part of that whole prayerful thing. But sometimes I just um, have had a stressful day, and I just go in there and I just open it up, and and then it's more like I'm taking it in rather than offering it. Yeah. yeah. Just they're they're very inspirational, and they also. They, they come from imbas, they come from inspiration, and it's very evident in them. So I was just wondering, like, I assumed it was probably that answer. So mm. it is very evident in, in the book. Thank you. Okay. Well, good night, good day, and good afternoon. <laughs> bye bye. Do you want to end the meeting, Clayley? Mm-hmm.